She was seeing this other guy too, who uh, who has Netflix. Like, and I don't know what my mom does. I think they're just friends, but I don't know if they Netflix and chill or they Paramount Plus and snore. Whatever they do, <laughs> is fine. But she said he has Netflix, and when I tell you he has Netflix, I mean he still has Netflix. Send DVDs <laughs> to his mailbox. I shit you not. Did anybody know that was still an option on the table? That used to be the whole business model. Now it's just the one cubicle in the corner. It's like, well, we can't fire Todd. He's the boss's kid. Just give him a bunch of those envelopes to play with. And I don't long for that era. I don't long for the era of getting DVDs in the mail. I miss the previous era when the whole family would pile in the car Friday night and you go to Blockbuster Video. That was a big night. Big, big night in the Ellis family. Because you drive out there, and it was so exciting going to the video store with all this anticipation, and you knew you were leaving with your fourth choice. Because <laughs> we all have the same strategy. You go to the video store, you start new releases, you go A to Z, and then everybody disperses to their favorite section. My sister tried to rent a horror movie. Oh, that's going to scare your little brother. My dad wanted an action movie. Honey, it's rated R. Mark is trying to rent Basic Instinct again. <laughs> that's not going to work. So then you just get in this debate, and it ends 30 minutes later with, well, you know what, fuck it. Just grab Sister Act again, and we'll all watch that. We went to Blockbuster once, but it was like three towns over. So my town, Williamsburg, Virginia, we didn't have Blockbuster. We had the local video store, Video Update, which was actually better than Blockbuster because we had all the same sections they had, but Video Update also had the curtain. <laughs> yeah, the curtain. It was always way in the back. And it was black with like glitter and weird stains all over it. <laughs> that was the curtain that led to the adult film section. And you weren't allowed back in there if you were under 18. They had a mirror so everybody could see who was in there. And 12-year-old Mark Ellis came up with a scheme. Yeah, four-person operation. Me, my buddies Jack, Brian, and Doug. So Jack got a ride to my house. We rode bikes to Brian's, and then we rode bikes to Doug's. Doug's dad was a Marine, so Doug took this shit seriously. <laughs> He comes out of his house, he's 12 years old, head to toe camo. He's like, hey man, I couldn't get the sword, but I got a knife. And we're like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> so here's what I came up with. My job was to distract the front court guy, right? You know the guy who's always judging you, he's got his picks <laughs> that are sacred. Doesn't matter what you're renting, he's gonna say it's not good enough. <laughs> like, oh, 2001 A Space Odyssey, Kubrick's other space movie. <laughs> Have you seen the moon landing? <laughs> so my job is to entertain that guy. Brian, Jack, they were the lookout, and then Doug was the most crucial part of the operation. Doug, G.I. Joe crawled back there, and he couldn't get back to the magical land of Oz, but he could reach his hand around the corner, and he could pull a movie. Only problem was he couldn't see what movie he was pulling. <laughs> so first time we tried it, he pulled Edward Penis Hands. <laughs> so now we got to watch a movie about a guy with five dicks on his hand, <laughs> which ended up being one of my top ten favorite film experiences of all time. Because we put it on at my house where we had all the good snacks, and we're watching it, and this is like two in the morning, and my mom comes downstairs half awake just to get a glass of water. She walks through the living room like, oh, I love Winona Ryder. Good night, guys. <laughs> So then Doug pulled another one the next week. We got cocky, and he pulled Hot Asian Invasion 6. <laughs> yeah. If you know anything about that franchise, that's when it got good. <laughs> that was their Fast Five. <laughs> but that's not the end of the mission. Now you have to go to another section and switch the tapes out with something we're allowed to rent. So he goes to the family section. First movie he sees, The Adventures of Milo and Otis. <laughs> Don't remember that movie. It's a dog and a cat, and they go across the country together. It's a great journey. And the guy working there thinks, we can't wait to get home to see this. <laughs> and the next guy that tries to rent Hot Asian Invasion 6 <laughs> instead gets the adorable journey of a dog and a cat <laughs> going across the country together. <laughs> and it's just such a weird mindfuck to think all those guys that I came up with that scheme with, they have families. And me, I just moved out, out to L.A., and I, and I chased this dream, and it's going okay now. But, I mean, there's a lot of misadventures you get into back in the day. And I used to work at the, uh, the World Famous Comedy Store. I used to be an employee there. And you do whatever they ask you to do. You park the cars, you clean up the puke, work the front desk. So <laughs> I drank a lot. And <laughs> I remember I got home one night, and I was hammered, and it was my little studio apartment, right? I've since added a whole bedroom to the empire. 
<laughs> so I, whenever you get home and you're drunk, you're some level of one of three things. You're either tired, you're hungry, or you're horny. <laughs> and you don't know which one you are all the time. Sometimes you think you're one, and it turns out, no, you were something else. So a couple weeks prior to this, I had met a sex worker at a gentleman's establishment. <laughs> if you're over 50 in this room, I met a hooker at a strip club. <laughs> and so I got her number, and she's like, we should hang out sometime. And I'm like, oh, we should hang out sometime. <laughs> and so I get home from the comedy store. I'm hammered, and I make two phone calls. And then I pass out. I called her, and I called Pizza Hut. <laughs> and then I fell asleep. So I woke up the next day. I had a bunch of missed calls. And then I got two texts that morning. One was from her, and it said, thanks for the pizza, asshole. <laughs> and then the other one was from the Pizza Hut guy, and it said, dude, anytime you need pizza, you give me a call. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody out pieces the hut, but I out pussy the hut that night. <laughs> yeah, but you get older in life and you think, oh wait, there's more, there's more stages to this whole thing than we originally thought, right? Because when you're a kid, you think, oh, I'm gonna grow up, I'll meet somebody, I'll get married, I'll have kids, that's the end. No, no, I'm here to tell you, if you're still single and you're my age, there's more to life. There's more phases than you were taught. I just entered a new one that I never knew existed. Nobody told me about this, but now I'm in the phase of my life. A lot of my married friends, they're getting divorced. My friends are coming back. <laughs> if you love something, set it free. <laughs> and you feel bad for the family or whatever, but you're also excited, right? You're like, <laughs> you're like, I got my buddy back, sweet. But you gotta be careful. That's not really your friend anymore, is it? No, it looks like your friend, but they've been through some shit you can't understand. <laughs> So it's like you took your friend as you knew them, buried them in Pet Cemetery, and now they're back. Like, hey, what's up, man? <laughs> hey, man, you got any of those PlayStation 5s left? I saw a, a, a tweet. You got any? <laughs> um, I do sincerely want to thank you all for coming out tonight. You guys have been a, uh, a fantastic crowd. And really, this was like, this was the exact scenario that me and every other comedian was envisioning when we were in lockdown and we couldn't perform in front of you all night after night. And you just think, when am I going to get to get back here? Because when the lockdown started, I actually was in Vegas and I had to scramble to get a flight home. So when you're scrambling to get a flight home, what airline do you use? Spirit. It's Southwest. It's Southwest. Who the fuck said Spirit? <laughs> I need to go from Vegas to LA, and I don't want to go through Cairo to get there. <laughs> Spirit isn't an airline, it's an escape room. <laughs> no, you want to fly Southwest. <laughs> so I flew Southwest, I have money. <laughs> and I think my letter was like G, and I didn't know they went that high. And, but I'm sitting on the plane, I'm in row 38, Success. <laughs> and I'll never forget as long as I live. Like 15 rows ahead of me, a guy sneezed. And for the first time in my life, nobody blessed him. <laughs> Not one of the three nuns sitting right behind him <laughs> blessed him. And it was weird. It was like a good sneeze, too. It was like that, that old man sneeze. That, aha! <laughs> like they're really sick or they just found treasure. Aha! So he sneezed once, nobody blessed him, we all got silent. He sneezed again, and we murdered him. He's dead. <laughs> and that story warms my heart for two reasons. One, I got to kill a guy. <laughs> and two, uh, a couple months ago, I got to go back to Vegas for the first time since the pandemic, and I got to work there. <laughs> and it was awesome, because Vegas was back, and people were gambling, and restaurants were full, and it was awesome. And I was reminded that there is a fantasy to doing stand-up that is not the reality. There's a difference. You have your fantasy of what you think the job is, and then the reality of what the gig actually is. So the fantasy of stand-up is that you're going to go on the road, and you're going to entertain audiences, and you're going to make a bunch of beautiful women laugh. And then one of them is going to come back to your hotel room with you, and you make love all night long. <laughs> Hasn't happened yet. <laughs> but I've only been doing this 17 years, so there's still time. <laughs> the reality is you go on the road, you make a bunch of beautiful women laugh, 
And then you go back to your hotel room alone, and the sex is always happening right next door. <laughs> I've heard a lot of people have sex. And it's fun now. But back when I was a young comic, it freaked me out. First time I heard it, I didn't know how to react. Because when I was a kid, I never heard my parents have sex. They wrestled a lot, never heard them have sex. <laughs> Occasionally you see dad take a leak in the middle of the night. Why is he wearing a cape? You know what? He's a wrestler. That's what I'm going with. So first time I was on the road and I had it, I was doing a, a gig somewhere in the Midwest, and like the painting on my wall was vibrating. And what do you do in that situation? Do you call the front desk and complain? Do you ride it out? I was like, look, I'm gonna give them 10 minutes. And then I came. So I'm like, oh boy. <sighs> this escalated quickly. Um, so then you just wait another 10 minutes and you bang on the wall. Hey, I'm ready to try again. Sorry about that. First timer. But now I'm a pro. I'm good. Best time I ever heard other people have sex which is a great way to start a conversation at a dinner party. <laughs> Best time I ever heard other people have sex, San Diego Comic-Con, 2018. Oh, what a time it was. And it was so beautiful, because it was nerds doing it, you know? And like, the misconception about us nerds is that we don't have sex. That's not true, we don't have a lot. <laughs> but when we do, you ever see a raccoon eat a filet mignon? <laughs> it's not gonna last long, but man, you'll remember that the rest of your life. So I'm in my hotel room, it's th Saturday night, 3 a.m., I'm about to pass out. I hear the door next to me close. And by this point in my career, I know the difference between like one person and like an excited couple. <laughs> this was the latter. So these people get back to their room and the first thing that turned me on that they might be doing something lovemaking-like <laughs> was not the sounds of passion. First thing I heard, music. I heard the faint strains of a classic John Williams theme song. <laughs> These people got home from being at Comic-Con all day, eating hot dogs, reading comic books, and they said, tonight's the night that we make love to Jurassic Park. <laughs> yeah. you know, I got out of bed and opened a beer. I was like, this is gonna be fun. I'm yelling lines from the movie, hold on to your butt. Use a condom, life finds a way. And I knew it was getting good. I knew one of them was about to have the moment because it was loud, the music was swelling. On my nightstand, I had a glass of water and it started to ripple. <laughs> and I tell you that story not to embarrass anybody. No, if you're in LA for the weekend, if you're going on a trip soon with your significant other, I want you to get in a hotel and have the loudest, most boisterous sex of your entire life. I just want you to realize we can hear you too. So make it fun for everyone. <laughs> right? Yell out something that's gonna make me laugh. Yahtzee always works. <laughs> Go board game with it. You sunk my battleship. I'm a nerd, so whenever I climax, I say, Chewy, we're home. Make it competitive and you're winner. <laughs> ladies, don't do this thing you usually do, ladies. Don't do the oh God, okay? Oh God, oh God, God can't hear you, I can. Make it fun for me. Do your favorite fast food jingle. Right there. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. <laughs> Go political. Epstein was murdered. Make it historical. Oh, right there. Right there. Six Semper Tyrannus.